Welcome back, you beautiful souls, to another installment of the Culinary Hotline Bling. Ting, ting, ting! We love it. Why do we love it so much? Because we're joined by one of our absolute favourites, people, never mind, chefs, Clem Chef, or Chef Clem, depending on who you are in the studio, is here this morning to help you sort out any of your culinary conundrums and maybe, just maybe, furnish us with a dad joke. Look, uh, guys, it's not, <laughs> not the best at the dad jokes, okay, but the weather's really bad in Cape Town. It is. But I love the fog, so I tried to bring some into the studios when I tried to run around catching it, but I couldn't. Why not? Missed. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm so <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> the thing is, it's not even like, it's not, not even a, a slight smile, he's genuinely sorry. Uh, no, I am, I'm really sorry, man. <laughs> no, stop, stop there. No, 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 stop, stop. No, it reminds me of that time when the beach was reunited with the sea. What did, what did the sea say when it met the beach? Please tell me. Nothing, man. It just waved. <laughs> <laughs> we are saying We're not good at that. this morning. <laughs> um, so, yes, it's the same vo uh, voice note line on WhatsApp to use if you want to send us any dad jokes this morning. But if you've got any com um, sort of conversation starters, any questions, anything for Chef Clem, please send those voice notes to 063408. Double eight six three. I finally settled on a way of saying the number at least, okay? Can we not just go, and here's the number at the <laughs> bottom of the, the number. screen? What if they're floating it above our head? We don't Who know. Who knows? Um, and it's the, the way you can stay connected. Um, and you can give us a call at any point. We might answer that phone, but it's all about the fathers, and fathers mm -hmm. love a little bit of chicken livers. I My dad does. love peri peri My chicken livers. My dad loves peri peri chicken livers, and he's like the master at making it. So this one's for him. Okay. We've got a few suggestions from other dads as well, so we're going to knock out. All yeah, the all of the things that I've seen on this list are kind of favorites of mine. Oh, okay, they, like you get a hankering. Dads get hankering for things. Hey, it's, this is I the get list. a hankering. I've got a hankering for some chicken livers. But here's the kicker: you got to do it properly. Right. Okay, and it's taken me many, probably about three decades, to learn how to cook a chicken liver, and I still get it wrong. Because the thing about chicken livers is people don't like it because they don't like the the texture of it and then the flavor of it, it's got, a, it's got a slightly gamey metallic flavor, mm. but that's the iron, and that's yeah. good. The thing about overcooking your chicken livers, that's, that's the difference for me, because chicken livers shouldn't be served completely cooked through, okay. right? <laughs> right, it shouldn't. But that means you need to then make sure that wherever you're getting your chicken livers from, it's the most reliable source, because uh, you're not, fresh. like I said, you're not cooking it all the way through. Fresh it, and lacquer. Fresh and lacquer, and when it comes to chicken livers, I only, I only, I only buy chicken livers from Woolworths. It's just, it's, it's, we know this, we know this. So what I've done is I've actually opened it up earlier, popped it over a strainer, let any of the excess moisture that's in there just drop out, okay. right? Because we, we want to brown the chicken liver. So the first thing we do is we're going to brown some butter, get the, the butter in there, nice and hot. And is it, a, is it really important to get that moisture out? Because you've you got to seal them. Right? You do. Like, like every other, I suppose, good kind of yeah. meat, you've got to seal and keep those flavors inside, really. Exactly, and a good way to do that is to get it pan nice and hot, get it sealed off there. We've added a bit of butter to it, but there's no intramuscular fat in liver, so it's fine. We're just adding the fat back. That's gonna start doing it, so you're gonna, it's gonna start popping. Hey, ah. as I said, it's gonna start popping. Okay. Hey, hey. It's done in the theater. As soon as it happens, get your pan, your pan lid, pop it on there, it's gonna start steaming as it pops. This is simple. I've never made a chicken liver recipe simpler. It's butter, peri peri sauce, chicken livers. Three ingredients, not even salt. Not even Did pepper. someone else bring the rolls for you? Mommy someone brought, the rolls, else brought, the, brought the rolls for you. Someone else brought the <laughs> rolls for us. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, like I said, is butter in the pan, get it nice and hot, livers go in, it's going to start popping and doing its thing. Lid goes on, give it a little shake. Oh. Okay? Because they are a difficult, it's, you can't flip them. No, no, no. So you, and you don't, you don't, you, yeah, you don't want to fiddle with it. By the time you're done turning all those little chicken livers over, something's overcooked already and it's just, it's not going to work. All the seasonings in there, salt, pepper, oh, garlic, that. chilies, everything. And the salt and pepper is important because you don't want to add extra salt and pepper to this recipe. The bazooka is loaded, my friend. Absolutely beautiful. So, um, as that sizzling sound is music to our ears, more music to our ears, voice notes sent in from you guys. And I think it's Abida from Cape Town. I've, I've probably got that wrong completely, but let's hear her voice notes and what she had to say ahead of Father's Day. Hi, Chef Clem. You know what I was thinking? I would make for Father's Day bean scurry <laughs> with some either naan or roti, um, some lemon oh. pickles, lemon acha are made already, 
um, roast chicken with veggies, roast potatoes, etc., and a potato pudding with dry fruit. My goodness, can I we go? I heard potatoes, that's what, what I heard. I heard curry, roti. Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness, man. And that's, I was thinking about that. There was even a roast chicken thrown in there. Uh, we're going to, I don't know how many fathers she's feeding on the day. I love Everybody's it. father is sort Everybody's of... Everybody's father. That's like three minutes. That might be a, a, one of your record-breaking meals, in fact. And I like the fact that you got the caramelization on the outside, mm -hmm. nice and beautiful and soft, and of course the, the waves of peri peri flavor. You can smell that. It is oh, coming. It is magical. so strong. It's so simple, so quick. You can actually make this in about two minutes, and that's amazing. Well, you and just did, yeah. You'll make it faster than it'll take to actually toast your Portuguese buns. But that's the thing. Not faster than you're going to no. eat it. But, not at or all. that dad is going to eat it. So please, we want you to keep sending those voice notes through. And um, what are you going to be cooking for your pops this Father's Day? Do you have any inspiration for us? Maybe a uh, dad joke or two to share. But most importantly, those culinary conundrums. Anything that's um, got your brain twisting ahead of Father's Day, something you want to make for him that's amazing, but you you just don't know how, we'll take you through it blow by blow. Let us know 063-408-8863. That is the WhatsApp line to use. And of course, you can find all of our culinary inspiration on our website, which is expressoshow.com. This looks incredible, buddy. What are we making next? Steak trinchado. There's going to be a death by chocolate cake. Get and out. then there's going to be another recipe at the end, another pie. Oh, I love it. Keep those voice notes coming. 0634088863. We'd love to hear from you. It's my feel good breakfast show. Uh, welcome back, you beautiful souls. Yes, you are dialed into the culinary hotline. Bling! Ding, 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 ding! And yes, it is inspired by our fathers today. Of course, Father's Day is coming up this Sunday. So please join in on the discussion. Um, let us know what your Father's Day culinary inspiration is. What are you going to be making your beautiful dad this Father's Day? Let us know with a voice note on our WhatsApp line 063 Um, So, buddy, I know that all of this produce is absolutely beautiful and amazing because it comes from Woolies. But what, what do you call um, a place that makes kind of okay products? Okay. A satisfactory. A satisfactory! Come on. Uh, <laughs> Keep those dad jokes dad coming. Jokes. Come on, they are dad jokes and that's... Um, that's what it's, what it's all about, man. Um, but no, you can raise the game. So we've got Melanie um, on the line right now. At least she sent us an inspired voice note this morning. Let's hear from her. Hello, my name is Melanie Mzobe, and my husband's name is Victor Mzobe. And his favorite meal for Father's Day would be a big fat Texan steak. Whoa. With some nice potato bake and veggies. Whoa, you had me on Texan. You see, the thing is that as like we're simple. We're simple and easy to please. And really simple, some of us. Really yeah, simple, really some of us. Simple. But th that's the thing, though, and I feel like um, the recipes we do today are also pretty simple. It's for dad, but also I'm being like, I'm, I'm, I'm really planning this out because I want the dads to watch it so they can add this to their arsenal. And this can be yeah. like something they can be like, when dad's cooking, you know, he's going to make that. Like, there's three things he can make. And it, it, all three of those things are going to be amazing. Well, that's the danger here is if you're going to make something that dad makes for himself and thinks he's really good at, you've got to come in from another angle. That's why I like the livers. The Texan steak's a difficult one because I don't let anyone else cook a steak in my house. You know no, what no, I'm no. saying? No, no, no. You man the grill. Um, it's yours. But, it's... but it's not to say we can't inspire you yeah. with something from a different lens, like a trinchado, of course, using beautiful quality yeah. steak. And what I've liked about both of these recipes, in fact, I think livers, most economical protein, right. one of the most. Yes. Um, and now we are taking one steak and we're turning it into, well, two steaks. Um, and turning it into a meal for two, three people. That's the thing. And you can use a, a, a less tender cut. We're making a trinchado. Yeah. You can use a less tender cut. And the trick is actually to season your meat like 24 hours in advance. Okay. It's almost like a dry brine when you add salt to it, but the meat starts to, to break, break down. down it becomes impasse. a lot more tender. And you can now use it for something that you would normally have to use, something like a, 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 a big chunk of sirloin or rump. You can now use a Texas steak and you'll get the same result. Absolutely beautiful. The I one like thing it. that's so important, regardless what cut you use, is, like I said, my tip is actually cube it and then season it like way ahead of time. Okay. Take it out the fridge. Like, like it's winter. Your meat's fine to sit on the counter for like three hours. It's not going to reach the temperature where it becomes dangerous. Where it okay? starts to build bacterial load or whatever, yeah. So what look, you want is that 
almost room temperature meet. Uh, completely, and, and it does make a difference. I mean, honestly, Guy, I follow your play-by-play -play with every steak that I cook. I follow that principle of the difference between an, a steak that you were cooking at home mm -hmm. and a restaurant steak is the seasoning, is salting that, that puppy Absolutely. before you let it rest and then obviously letting it rest after the fact. But yeah, slightly different cooking process, but you still want to make sure that you treat the meat well and you sear in that flavour. But when I say flavour, there is a lot of flavour. There's a lot of flavour. There's a lot of flavour. I'm actually going to need your help for a second. I'm ready, so I'm ready. got some red onion in front of you. What I want you to do is to... You can take the bottoms off of that now. Okay. The bottoms of the little... I call them like the little, the little butts that keep it all together. Okay, sure. you can take that off. Now you can turn... Bottom cut facing you. Okay. Right. Uh, uh. There we go. There we go. And now start slicing thin little slices for me. Okay. What happens when you slice the onions this way is you're actually working against the grain of the onion, but you, you're not going to cry as much as well. You're going to keep ah. that sweetness inside the onion. And when you cook it, that sweetness comes out. I just find the onions in the, tend to be a little sweeter. They just... And especially with a red onion, you want to capitalize on the fact that it is naturally sweet. It yeah. is naturally sweet. And it's all about the preparation until ahead of time. So oh, not one tear, man. Not one tear. Not one tear. So I've got my steak looking good. And you just want to get like a proper brown sear in the part of the flavor that Pinchado is actually the flavor of the meat. So get that going. Once you've got that, we've got a little bit of flame going there. We're going to actually, now we're going to get some serious flame. Are you ready, G? I'm ready, man. This no, is no, optional. Not. This is optional. Wait, wait. Okay, we actually are. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That was, if you're wondering what was that little blur across the screen? And again, it's G. Okay, I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, this is a little brandy. If you're going to flam bay over an open flame, here's the thing. Take the pan, just shift it to the side. Uh -huh. Okay? Add your brandy. Oh. And now go back. Okay? Oh. If you had to do that, Damn. if you had to do that directly <laughs> over that, you most, you, there's a, a good chance you're going to actually catch fire. And lose your eyebrows. You want to do that. So okay. you take sure. the pan off. That was a the, close call, eh? that. Okay. So alcohol, obviously, we do this with adult supervision. <laughs> Ryle's on the side. The adults is here. Exactly. We, we have supervision. We into the kitchen to we make have. sure. So that, and what, is, what does that do if you don't mind me asking the flavor? It flavors it. And you can come smell this now. It's like a, a sweet, meaty, nutty, caramelized flavor that's mm. in there. The alcohol's gone, right? So I'm going to add a little more to it. A little bit of red wine. <laughs> Safety <laughs> first. Safety first. This is fine. This is not going to catch so much. Every time you add alcohol, what you really want to do is you want to cook the, the you want to cook when you evaporate the alcohol. Alcohol's better, and you're going to taste it in there. It's not but, a great flavor. We don't. But the aromas are what yes. you want. Okay. So again, did that cook down? Then we're going to go in with butter. We'll add more butter in the end. Garlic, rosemary. Ooh. Okay. What's also nice is if you're cooking on like a. a a kettle braai or charcoal outside, you get a cast iron pan. Yeah, You'll be showing sure. off, they'll be like, hey, gee. Look, that might be like, honestly, one of the best Father's Day gifts you can get Papa is, is a pan, a cast iron pan that he can use on a stove top, in an oven, and on a braai. Honestly, that'll be, be a game changer, I think, for me. Absolutely. Bay leaves. Bay leaves, of course. Bay leaves. G's onions. Yeah. So what I would have done is, before I added the garlic and the butter, I would have added your onions so they have a chance to, to cook, cook down. Through. Okay, so get that in there. This is going to look, it's already smelling so good. Thanks for not touching my bottom. This I didn't touch bottoms. your bottoms. You can use that for some compost for later. Okay, some thyme goes in. Have I got everything? The last thing you want to do is hit it with a bit of acidity. The acidity comes from red wine vinegar. Okay. Okay, but I want, I want pepper. Like, no playing. I like I want a lot of pepper. Yeah. Don't hold back. When it comes to trinchada, I like a lot of pepper. Like I said, I've seasoned my meat earlier. A little bit now. This is so quick. I mean, so it's, quick. but it's the most, man. You've layered. I mean, there are about eight layers of flavor working through that beautiful, very complex little trinchada. But it's like you say, it's just it's almost throw it all together. Get it together. Absolutely and love you, it. you want to work quickly because you don't want to overcook that, that steak. You don't need to go tough. So once it starts bubbling, everything's going, looking like it's doing the thing it's supposed to. We're going to get a little bit of cream. Ooh. The colors are going to come together. A little bit of butter. Boom. Once the butter melts and gets in there, you're done. You're done. So what I do is, once it comes to a rapid boil like this, give it a mix, give it a mix, if this colour starts settling, let okay. the last little bit of butter melt at the table. Just take okay. the whole dish. Uh, take the whole dish. And let it chill. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and as that, mess, that, that meat rests, or mests, as meat rests, um, it's, yeah, it's going to draw in all of that beautiful flavour. Absolutely magical. A lot of ingredients went into that. Really simple to make, though. If you would like that full recipe list, head over to expressoshow.com. Then we'd love to get your voice notes in. What are you cooking for, Dad? What jokes are you telling, Dad? How do you feel about your dad? Let us know. 0634088863. Any culinary conundrums ahead of Father's Day? Chef Clem is ready to answer. We'll see you in a moment. Beautiful, man. 
Welcome back, you beautiful souls. This morning on our culinary hotline, bling, ding, 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 ding. We are tackling all of your conundrums and sharing your favorite recipe inspirations for Father's Day. So, um, of course, Father's Day is this Sunday. And if you have any questions for our gorgeous chef, Clem, please join in on the discussion. Send that voice note right now to our WhatsApp uh, line at 063408863. And um, I think let's open up the session with a voice note and let's see if we can help this poor soul. Let's hear what they had to say. Good morning, Express Show. This is Masplela all the way in Johannesburg. And I wanted to ask a question because mm. I am struggling in the kitchen. I wanted to ask what type of cheese do you normally use for mac and cheese? Because I've been struggling for years and I've given up. <laughs> What kind of cheese does she use to make a cheese sauce? I, I hope so. It sounded like she said to make for mac and cheese, of course. Easy, All right, peasy. got you. Mac and cheesy, easy, peasy. I've got it, man. I've you got, got this. You, yeah. OK, so G, why are you doing that? So when it comes to making a cheese sauce, what you're looking for is essentially the, the cheese that's going to flavor your cheese sauce. So you're going to make your bechamel first. And we've got so many videos and recipes on making your bechamel sauce on the Espresso website. Then your cheese. There's no limit, G. You can use whatever you like. My rule is I go for something that's got a, like a nice, sharp flavor. Okay. So I do something like either a blue cheese or something like a, wow. like okay. a, like a mature Emmental or like something that's going to give you like really nutty. Even, even a well-aged cheddar. Absolutely. For me, is the ultimate nuttiness, I think. Absolutely. Eh? Then, I, then what I normally do is then I add something that's a little creamier. So then I'll go for maybe a mild white cheddar. Wow. I combine cheese. I don't like just doing one. I'm trying to think of, of a cheese that you can't use for You're not cheese cheesist. Sauce. You're not cheesist. I'm not a cheesist. No, you're no, not. no, 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 no. All cheese. Mm. Perfect. So what, you, what, what I normally say is if you want to get that cheesy flavor but only use one cheese, use a mature white cheddar. I just find that the flavor and the color looks beautiful. You get some nice nutty flavors coming through. Talking about nutty, my, my secret to any cheese sauce, mm -hmm. the smallest little bit of fresh nutmeg. Or, or a little bit say, of nutmeg. I've heard, I've heard you say that before. It adds so flavor. You don't, you, a you, bit, you, bit of sneaky. You don't know where it comes from. It just tastes it's, really, yeah. really good. So definitely mature. Uh, and crisp up that cheese on the top of your mac and cheese. I'm sorry, I'm like all about that. You've got to have a little bit of crisp. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. What am I making here? What am I doing? You are creaming our egg, <laughs> sorry, our butter and our sugar for our death by chocolate cake. Oh. So very, very important for the creaming process. You want to get your, your butter and your sugar work together until it changes color, becomes a lot lighter. It's starting to go quite, yeah. quite blonde. So here's <laughs> the thing, though. Mm. It's winter, so this butter was softened earlier, but it's so cold, it firmed up again. Oh. What you do is work with softened butter. It makes life so much easier. Gee, you can turn up the speed a little bit. While you're doing that, I'm going to go in with Eggs, okay, one at a time. Oh, we can do this, we can do this. Oh. One. I'm going maximum. You are doing, you are, it's looking so good. No one's gotten covered in cake mixture yet. Yeah. Two. Two. And you want to do it one at a time. What happens is when you do one at a time, you give, you're more likely to start breaking out the sugar granules. Uh -huh. Okay, so I like that, that method. You're doing good, you're doing good. Cool, okay. Then, you know, I, I had this little realization, eh? I, I, the whole time I thought it was my dryer that was shrinking my clothes. It turns out it was the refrigerator the whole time, Ruth. <laughs> it's the refrigerator. Also, when you wash your hair, you need to wash your hair standing over the basin. Okay. Because what? the instructions clearly say on a shampoo bottle, adds body, adds volume. <laughs> so it's, and you think about it, if you stand up straight and you wash your hair, all that shampoo's running down your body. That's why you got the volume. Uh, wash your hair word. over the basin. Don't and, the shampoo and why it's so body. soft and conditioned. You, yes, oh, okay, man. so it's over the basin from now on. Okay, I love it. Okay, how are you doing? It's looking beautiful, dude. It's, I know what, I've no idea what it's supposed okay, to look like. Okay, you can stop now for a second. But it, it's starting to look like... That's what you want, that's what um, you want. So what, something that Zoe would absolutely adore. I would imagine she would child this. Should we just go with it? Straight, eh? Should we just go with it? Okay, so what you're gonna do now is we've got baking powder and we've got um, some flour. I'll also add a bit of salt to that. I, I am using salted butter, but with chocolate I do add a little extra salt in there. Okay. So, G, baking powder goes in there with the salt. We're gonna add that. So what, what I would normally do, but I'm not seeing it now. Normally you would actually melt. Like a Bay Marie vibe. Bay Marie vibe? No, no, in yeah. like just boiling water actually, you know? Okay, okay got some cocoa. Boil, boil, boil. Got some chocolate chips. And this is a chocolate that we chunked up ourselves. You don't have to specifically go and buy chocolate chips. Yeah. Just get a chocolate, chop it up. Coffee. Whatever. Ooh, nice. Whatever chocolate's on special that day, I'm going to say. Right. 
but you want to go kind of bulky or dark, dark color, okay? Mm -hmm. So G, I'm going to start adding the flour. Okay, and my okay. back in, back in with this guy. And you're back in there. You're going to add it gradually. So boiling water goes over this mixture, and everything's going to come together like a perfect brown little mixture. So we set it to the side for a little bit while we add in the flour. We're looking good, looking good. So now I need everybody to imagine at home that okay. we have got Melted, the boiling water over this. beautiful mixed. Okay. And right. you're doing a good job. You want to work at a slow speed. You can even stop and start using a wooden spoon or a spatula at this point to fold it through. Then we add our chocolate mixture. I'm fast forwarding now so we can actually okay. get it done. Ba, 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 ba. There we go. And ta-da. There we go. I'm going to pop this to the well, side. Uh, can we put these in a bag and keep them for Zoe? Absolutely. Because I think Ab I'm going to send them to a radio studio at lunchtime just, just for her. Oh, my just goodness. Just for her. Oh. Okay. We've got the two cakes. We divided okay. the batter into two, and then we've got two layers. G. Yes. Here's the thing. What I like doing is I like turning my cake upside down. If, you, if I need to trim it, I'll take a little bit of that off. But you know what? I'm not that fussed. It's OK. It's going to look beautiful. I just want to work with the surface as flat as possible. OK. Then, super simple. Cocoa, icing, sugar, and cream for the simplest frosting, OK? There you go, my G. Easy peasy. You're going to work on that. I'm going to give you. Here you go. Thank you. You can add. So I know I would normally give you a lot more icing, but let's just work a little we, bit. Uh, how thick? Give me a little bit of a sandwich. But keep a little bit for the top, OK? All right, beautiful. Look at that. Here we go. I've got my boiling water so long while you're busy with that. So, there we go, there we go. So, I've noticed something, and yes, it's happening. It's happening. When Graham <laughs> focuses, just keep an eye on him. The tongue comes out. Oh, for sure. Those kids that did that in high school, where are you at now? Do you know that? Because I, I know G's here. G's here. I, oh, and I did people. it all through Strictly as well. Lindsay was reminding me that's uh -huh. like, like every dance. I'm like, just fix your face, fix your face. <laughs> Is that why your tongue was out your mouth in Strictly? No, uh, because he's like a married that, like, man. Yeah, that was like so a So clearly there was moment. another reason as well. Let's oh, give it a little gee. bit more. Okay, lovely. You can prop it with your with your. All right, while well, we sandwich. do this, we're going to listen to another voice note. Let's see if this is a culinary conundrum or a really good dad joke. Let's have a listen. Please assist me with any how to make a, a nice sauce for Purevo's roll, Ooh. homemade Purevo's roll. Or homemade burgers, just to make them taste nicely, like in the restaurants, please. Okay. Got you. Well, he, we're luckily we've got a secret agent here. This is the guy who came from the restaurants to us. Okay, so he teaches us how to do it. A great sauce for buri rolls or for burgers to Let, take it to another level. Let's do burgers quickly because it's okay. the simplest one ever. Mushrooms. They add beefy flavour. And when you're making a burger, the, the the idea is to harness as much beefy flavour as possible. Gee, I'm passing this to you while you go. So what I like doing is I like doing a quick and easy mushroom sauce for my burgers. Mushrooms into a pan with a little with a little bit of butter, a little bit of oil. Get a proper sear on it, like you would on a steak. Okay. Then a lot of pepper, like be like Ooh. over generous with it. A little bit of rosemary and garlic. Once the garlic becomes fragrant, you know that everything else in the pan, the rosemary is nice and toast. Everything else is looking good. Add a bit of cream. Simple, simple. Ooh. Cook it down. Pour that over your burger. For a bourgeois roll, a little bit of onion, a little bit of chutney, when you combine the two, you kind of get a monkey gland sauce. So I'm going to find out. We've got the recipe on the Expresso website. Check out a monkey gland sauce. It's something that's so South African, and it is one of the best sauces you can ever have in a bourgeois roll. So go and check out the monkey gland sauce recipe on the Expresso website. And then also check out the simple, we've got a nice easy mushroom sauce. Go check out that recipe as well. Dad will thank you. Dad will thank you. Keep those voice notes coming. And um, you can, of course, find this cake recipe on expressoshow.com. It's a death by chocolate, but hopefully chocolate, it's going to bring chocolate. you alive on Sunday morning come Father's Day. We're going to keep the Father's Day celebrations going. But right now, let's get into those news headlines. More, more, I said, more.